Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. the advocate on Plus TV Africa. As Uta indicated, we are the voice of the voiceless. Quietly burying our dead, criminal impunity, and the rule of law, my story. So it was really interesting when Ekene asked me to join the advocates for this week, which I'm always excited to do. Um, immediately she mentioned the data I said to her, I'd like to speak about criminal impunity and the rule of law. Because 27 years ago, to this date exactly, my brother, Zachary Mohammed, was shot at, and killed at point-blank range by his friend, Sani Gerber, AD. A week later, the friend was arraigned on charges of culpable homicide. But because his father was a prominent politician in Kano at the time, the matter died. When the grief cleared, I took it upon myself to follow up on the matter, as there's no statute of limitations for murder. I went back to the court in Sulejah to check the, and the files had disappeared. There was not a record of this heinous crime. Thus it was like, poof, my brother's life was erased by this boy and no one was made to account for it. So you wonder, why should it matter to the rest of you? We, his family have grieved and it should be over, but it is not. 27 years later, nothing has changed. This is a reality for many people in Nigeria. I've written articles extensively on this, about the rights of victims of crime in Nigeria. Some are prominent and you would recognize them. Remember Dele Giwa, Bola Ike. He was Minister of Justice and the Attorney General of the Federation. The shock killed his wife, Justice Atunike Ike, and left his children orphans. MKO and Kudura Tapiola, Funsha William, Alfred Rewani, Saada Turini, and the list goes on. Boko Haram abducts and rapes at will. Armed bandits in the Northwest throw babies into life flames in front of their mother. On July 27, 2020, in Lagos, Chidima Ajoku was returning from work with a colleague, Chima Naike, when a 20-foot container fell on their bus and the driver ran away. She leaves behind a family for whom she had was the principal breadwinner. Her mother cried for justice and for those who were responsible to be prosecuted. But given the frequency with which these tankers crush people and no one is held accountable, it will not happen. Not so long ago, Hajara Ismail reported that her son was tortured alongside his friend at the township police station in Bochi over allegations of stealing chickens that belonged to a retired police officer. She's quoted to have said, even if they were to take him to prison after being convicted, that would be okay. But it is sad and devastating for the hopes of your son to be bought after being tortured to death without you knowing exactly what he did. What did he do? He stole a few chickens that belonged to a policeman. Meanwhile, the officials of NDDC have been accused of misappropriating money of which 6.2 billion naira was used for palliatives. Our children all over the world in, on Niger Delta scholarships are suffering because their school fees remain unpaid by the same NDDC. Our criminal justice system is broken. Justice is selective, and our police who decide when they want to be judge and executioner are millions of corrupt politicians and their cronies. A philosopher, Tom Hobbs says, that for as long as we continue to live in what he calls a state of nature, without laws, 
or anyone with the power to back them up, life and society become solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. Sounds too familiar. Wow. wow, thank you, Aisha. This very, is this very, is, this is, very, this is very familiar. Touching. This was um, a similar discussion I was having with um, a colleague yesterday. And um, fortunately, I also saw a senior advocate, you know, paint a picture of a, a, a similar scenario. And he said, you know, the police is your friend. Mm. Uh, that is when you have money to finance their operations as a complainant until the accused person is arrested and heaven bless you if the accused person is more influential or has, or has much money than you at that point you now becomes the accused person and then he stops taking your call and and, and it's sad that um, the essence of government is the security and welfare of the people and so i feel bad when the same government will tell me that yes you know, we are here for you. It happens, they tell you, we are on top of it, go about your normal duties until the next happens. We don't really have value for human lives here. Yeah. And because we, the people, also are truly not ready to hold government accountable. Because it happens, we say, oh, we live on for God. Oh, may so rest in peace. Allah gives, Allah takes. And, you know, we go about our normal duty until it happens to us. Mm. And I think the solution to all of this is, look, we have to collectively come together and begin to demand justice, not troop into churches and mosques. The way we go to these places, if we all come out and mm -hmm. say, it has happened to one person, we demand justice before it happened to us, definitely there will be justice. But because we allow individuals to carry their own Cross. body, and we can never achieve it if you allow individuals to carry Absolutely. their own body. Until we come together to carry the burden of, you know, one, one another, another, we will not get there. And the, today is the police, they think, you know, but the same police, when it happens to them, they also want the yeah. people I mean, to carry their we, cross. We, we saw when um, there was an issue in, I think it was in uh, Borno or Medigree, when the police and the army, and the, yes. the suspect who was Yeah, the Wadume case. Yes, oh, and yes. then the army some rogue mm. soldiers, and the police went on social media asking Nigerians for help. Mm. It was, it's amazing. Um, I, th I think um, Aisha's advocacy is, is very deeply personal and very yeah. important. But it, beyond the impunity, beyond the, the, the absence of punishment for people who, who commit these crimes, mm. uh, who break the law, there also should be punishment for government officials mm. who fail in their responsibility to to do what is right, to govern properly, to provide security and, and, and welfare for the people. Um, however, I, I, you know, it, it appears as if the, you know, you've talked on, uh, about this, we, we, yeah, uh, the big man syndrome, mm. yeah. um, where because he is now a big man, um, the rule of law tends to bend yeah. um, 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 for them, or, or at least bows to them. Mm. I think that more people Social media is helping, but I think that we've, as we've seen, social media can also be weaponized, can yeah. be paid yeah. for, can be bought and paid for. Yeah. So it, it is about really the integrity. Um, the de we must have a defender of the integrity of the rule of law. I don't know how that will be. Who would that be? No, it has to be <laughs> all us. Of us. It has Collective. to be us. I mean, that be all the, of us. The, the bottom line, I mean, I was listening to all that and I just thought we live in a system. Can happen to anybody. That, that yeah. forces, Absolutely. that actually makes people do corrupt things, you know? Like, I looked at, uh, actually, it's Liboris, I came across your post the other day, um, which is, a, you showed a picture of how the police, police live station, yes. in the police barracks, and, and then we're expecting them to treat us like we're human beings and, you know, that we're not people to extort money from. Um, if people are living in that kind of condition, you know, we can only expect a certain kind of treatment from them. I remember when I got robbed, and I took it to the police station. I even got some people who collected the guy because the police wouldn't even, couldn't even get the guy for me. I got somebody who was able to round the, the guy up, bring him, yes, <laughs> bring him to the police station, everything. Boy, they promised me that, don't worry, madam, everything will be done. I didn't know, I was fresh from, I don't know what. They started, and then that, that's Money, when the extortion yes, started. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they today. extorted from me, extorted from him. Yeah, they're extorted. Like this. In they're the like end, this. the guy actually called me and said, madam, please, take this matter off the police hand because I would even rather pay you directly. You know, they're collecting. And that's <laughs> when I knew that 
<laughs> You're never oh, going to get justice in this oh, system. It's about who is the highest bidder, who has more money. And that's why, unfortunately, that's the, you know, the, the case that's happening today. It's, it's very it's frustrating. A, it's, it's, it's a systemic problem, actually. Mm. Yeah? And it cuts across from the police to the justice system. Yeah. Everybody is involved. And, and for us as the people, I think we abdicated our responsibilities. Mm -hmm. There is this mentality that outsources our own responsibilities to God. Yeah, and we'll say, yeah, that's uh, okay, we'll leave it to leave God. Leave it for God. Meanwhile, those but kind of... when it of, comes to God, we, we, if God is, we want to fight for we God. We want to fight for God. For our own rights, we, we, we leave it we, to we, 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 like we, we don't feel connected to one another. I don't know what they have done to us for however well, long. Well, I don't know if they, we well, still we suffer together. No, we don't feel okay. connected. Like, if something happens to you, I'm thinking, well, that's Balahan's problem. It will solve his you own. know, exactly. he, that's his business, you know, you which know, when, is not when, the case. When Aisha was, you know, taking advocacy, the picture I kept seeing was my children. Mm. If this happens, if what this will is done in the I board, feel? it can happen to anybody. anybody. Okay. That's why we need to come together. Absolutely. And it can happen to anybody. And I thank, don't know what thank, we're afraid of. Thank you, guys. Um, well, this, um, thank you, Aisha, for this. <laughs> um, sober time calls for sober reflection. And I'll be continuing that mode um, after the break. So join us after the break. <laughs>